Hi, this is the fourth video in the playlist where we've been looking at this sample assessment materials. It's the level 9 to 1 specification and it's for Edexcel higher tier paper 2, uh, which is the calculator version. If you uh, follow the link below in the description, you'll be able to download this paper. The whole idea is that uh, it's going to be about a 20 minutes to 30 minute video. Um, have a look at each of the questions by stopping the video and having a go at them for yourself and then compare your solutions with the solutions which I'm going to post. Okay, we finished in the last video at question number 18, so we're going to start here at question number 19, which is just one of those questions. I think with a lot of these questions, you either kind of know it or you don't really. Um, the, you could sort of work it out if you wanted to, it's just the one mark for these, but basically what they're saying is, is that this particular graph is the graph of y equals a function of x, okay? On the grid above, sketch the graph of y equals a function of minus x. So in other words, all the x values have become negative values. So what we do is we're able to take the um, negative value of minus 2 becomes plus 2, okay? So what we're doing really is moving things across by this um, amount on the x-axis, okay? Um, the easiest way of doing this is just making sure that you've got a little dot, okay? It's a little bit tricky to see when I'm actually doing the video, but hopefully you'll see there that that's allowed me then to kind of just draw this. I don't think this is going to turn out as well as I want it to, but um, hopefully it'll give you some idea, okay, that you've got something like that. Alrighty. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one, which is on the grid. Sketch the value of y equals minus fx plus 3. Well, a minus fx is a reflection in the x-axis. So in other words, this whole thing is going to be reflected like that. But because we're going to add 3 to the values at the end of it, what we're going to do is not only... Um, reflect it but also add 3 to the values as well. So if we look at this value here, I'm going to move this value. It would be it would be stationary. It would sort of go like that, but we're going to move it up three places so it's going to go like that, okay? Um, same with um, uh, this value here. We're going to move it down by 3, but actually uh, beg your pardon, we're going to move it down um, as a reflection, so it would ordinarily be reflected here, but then we're going to move it up by three, so it's going to be here. Okay, same with this one, it's going to be reflected down here. Well, we're going to move it up by three, so it's going to be there. Okay, that one we would move it down by three. Okay, uh, a big problem, we're going to reflect it, it's going to be there, and then we're going to move it uh, up by three to there, so with that one there, okay? Again, I hope that's all right for you. A little bit tricky to see on this particular video, but it will allow you just to sketch in this curve like that, okay? So what might be an idea is if you have a look at the, um, the videos on uh, three minute maths, uh, there are some papers that you can have a look at there and have a look at some of these reflections. I'm just going to make that just a little bit tidier and take it down to there, actually, just to just for the sake of completeness. Okay, oops, uh, just for the sake of completeness. Okay, I wish I'd not started now. Okay, <laughs> but that gives you an idea, and uh, you can have a look at my solution in the uh, in the download from the website post as well. Okay, so let's move on to working with some algebra questions in question number 20. Now this is um, simultaneous equations. Um, now what we've got with these is basically the equation of a circle. This is um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So actually this is a circle. Okay, so if you like, we've got something like that. I'm not sure. Okay, and then we've got a line of 
y equals uh, 2x plus 5. So that's actually going to go through this circle, uh, something like that. And what we're looking for is for those two points there where it actually intersects. Now, they've asked us to solve this algebraically. So um, again, if you have a look on the channel, there are um, there is a playlist on these types of um, uh, solving of simultaneous equations. So what we normally do is we say, well, I've got this value here where I can write this as y equals. In this particular case, I'm going to take this minus 2x and move it over. and I'm going to get 5 plus 2x. OK, so it's exactly the same equation, but I've just made it now y as the subject of that particular equation. And then I'm going to take this value and I'm going to plug it into the first equation. So I'm going to end up with x squared plus, now rather than writing y squared, I'm going to write 5 plus 2x squared and that equals 25. OK, and then really it's a case of solving for x. Now, sometimes these can be really, really straightforward. Occasionally you need to be able to use the quadratic formula, but I have worked through this before and actually you won't need the quadratic formula for this particular one. So let's just have a look at that. Uh, I've got x squared and it's always a good idea to work very, very logically with these to make sure that every step of the way you're demonstrating what it is you're doing. Even if it involves you writing x squared several times, as we're going to, um, it shows the examiner that you've got a good, strong, methodical way of doing things. OK, so that's 10x plus 10x. That's going to be plus 20x. And that's going to be plus 4x squared equals 25. Now, I'm a little bit encouraged here at the moment because if I now tidy all of this up and gather up the like terms, what I can see is actually I'm going to end up with x squared plus 4x squared. Well, that's 5x squared. Five's always a good number to work with on these types of things because they're fairly easy to divide by or factorise by. Um, if I bring this 25 over, I'm going to actually lose these two 25s because this would become a minus 25. So this lot is going to be equal to zero. OK, and then I've actually got plus 20x on its own. OK, so now I can just simply factorise for five. And what I end up with is five, uh, beg upon 5x, and that's going to be x plus four and that equals zero. OK, I hope you're all right with this factorization. They don't always work out where you get a nice, neat quadratic equation. Sometimes you only get two terms left, in which case it's a much simpler factorization to do. Because what we can say then is we've got five lots of x equals zero and we've got x plus four equals zero. Well, that means then that five lots of x equals zero. So x equals zero. OK, and also then we've got x equals minus four. OK, again, if you're not sure about how I'm doing any of these, always please add a comment below. OK, so in other words, what I've got is I've got my two values of x. Now, actually, I haven't drawn that particularly well because my first value of x is going to be actually up here somewhere. OK, and my second value of x is going to be minus four. But hopefully you got the idea. OK, so um, what I'm going to do then is I've got two values of x. I've got one where when x equals zero and I've got another of when x equals minus 4. And then really it's just a case of plugging this back into our original formula because y equals 5 plus 2x, OK? Well, 5 plus 2 times nothing means that y equals 5, OK? So I can write on here that therefore x equals 0 y equals 5. And that would be my first answer. OK, when x equals minus 4, well, again, y equals 5 plus 2 times x. If I plug minus 4 into that, I get 5 plus 2. And again, I use tend to use brackets. Well, 
2 times minus 4 is minus 8. So I've got 5 minus 8, so y equals minus 3. OK, so again, I'd write that out as x equals minus 4, y equals minus 3. And actually, that's the answer to this particular question. So my initial sketch wasn't quite right, um, but now I've got a good uh, algebraic solution to this particular pair of simultaneous equations. OK, so let's move on then to question number 21. So we are now getting towards the end of this particular uh, calculator paper. We've only got a couple more questions to go. Now, with this one, I think this is quite a tricky question because part of it is actually um, sketching it and making sure that you understand what it is they're asking you to do. OK, so the first thing is, is that we've got we know it's a triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a standard triangle over there. OK, and we're told it's triangle RPQ, RP and Q. OK, now um, RP is 8.7 centimetres. Well, that's great. That looks all right to me. And PQ is 5.2. So that's OK. That looks good to me. And then it says angle PRQ equals 32 degrees. PRQ. So PRQ. Oh, excellent. So that's worked out very well for me because um, sometimes with these, just drawing a little sketch will give you a really, really good idea of what it is you're trying to do. OK, now it says, assuming that this is an acute angle, I don't know why they've said that, because in my mind it would be an acute angle. I guess it doesn't necessarily need to be, but um, that's they've given me that bit of information. So I'm just going to run with that for the moment. OK, I beg your pardon. This is an acute angle. Beg your pardon. PQR. So this is an acute angle. OK, and it asked me to calculate the area. Well, in order to calculate the area, um, the formula I know, I can either do a half base times height, but I suspect that's going to be quite difficult for me to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sine rule. The area of a triangle equals a half AB sine of C. OK, well, in order to get that, this is what they call an inclusive angle formula. So I need to be able to work out um, this angle here, because then I've got these two inclusive sides. OK, but in order to do that, I've got to work out this angle first. <laughs> OK, so because in order to do that, I'm going to use the sine rule. So I've got sine over 32 degrees of sine of 32 degrees over 5.2 equals the sine of uh, PQR, OK, which is this one, and that's going to be over 8.7, OK? And again, if you're not sure about this, have a look at some of the questions on the playlist. OK, now if I cross multiply by 8.7, it means I can work out PQR equals 8.7 times sine 32 over 5.2. OK, and if I pop that in my calculator, that's going to give me the value of the sine. OK, all right. I don't want the sine. I want the value of the actual angle itself. So I have to use inverse trigonometry for that. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of that into my calculator and then I'm going to type in the answer. OK, of the sine minus one. And that will then give me the angle PQR. Now, if I do that in my calculator, it's going to give me. Um, it's going to give me 62.44 degrees. OK, so 62.44 degrees is this angle over here. OK, so that's P. Q R. All right. Now, um, for then to work out the area, as I mentioned before, I need to work out this angle here. Well, as you know, in a normal everyday triangle, everyday sort of triangle, all of the angles add up to 180 degrees. So if I want to add, a, I want to find out this angle at the top here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that angle 
RPQ is going to be 180 minus 32, which is this one here, minus 62.44. And if I pop that in my calculator, um, I'm actually going to get 85.56 degrees. And that's perfectly fine for the calculation I'm going to do to be able to then work out. Okay, I'm sorry I missed that on the on the video, but can you see here what I've done here? As I've said that if I want to work out this top angle, I know they all add up to 180 degrees. So it's gonna be 180 minus 32, minus the angle that I've worked out. So it's gonna be 85.56 degrees. Okay, so then if I use my half AB sine C, OK, I've now got the things that I need for it. I've got this value of 8.7. I've got this value in here. I've just worked out as 85.56. And then this angle here of 5.2. So I can go ahead now and just plug this straight into my calculator as a half times 8.7 times 5.2 times the sine of 85.56 okay and then again like a lot of these things i get this horrendously long number five five three 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 two six centimeters squared okay but it has asked me in the text to give my answer correct to three significant figures so to three significant figures is going to be 22.6. Remember, that's the third number there. I'm going to change that to six because the number after it is five. OK, so to three significant figures, that would be the correct answer. OK, so a little bit tricky with that one, little bit tricky. OK, so the interesting bit of it, as I mentioned before, is I don't know why they told me that PQR is an acute angle until I actually get to part B of the question. And it says if you did not know that PQR is um, an acute angle, what effect would this have on your calculation of the area? OK, well, I think um, it would mean that we've got basically a triangle that looks like that. OK, now because of the sine rule, the sine way signs work, there would actually be two answers. Um, so I think that they have to tell you this. So it would say, I think there's a couple of things you could write with this. You could say that RPQ, so it, you could put that angle PRQ, which is actually this angle here, would be smaller. OK. Uh, because it would have to be because you've actually made this now into an acute angle. And I think also um, there could be now two answers, could be two answers. OK, which would be the original answer because you're, you're, you are told it is. But if you didn't know it was, you would just, I think, naturally assume that it was going to be an acute angle because that's the way we normally draw triangles. We don't usually draw them like that. We normally draw them like that. And we expect triangles to look like that. So we would work it out on the assumption it's an acute angle. Um, however, if we weren't told that, if we did not know it, the effect it could have is there would also be a new calculation, which would be a new angle. OK, where it could look something like that. OK, so we would get two different answers, I think, for this type of question. OK, um, I think we'll we'll just work through now. We've got a few minutes left on the video. So the final question, which is uh, question 22 on this paper, which is one of these questions on um, cones and working out, I think, um, the mass of the frustrum. OK, <laughs> all righty. So uh, we've got a glass cone. OK, a little bit's chopped off the top of it and it would work out the mass of the of the bit that's left, which they happen to call the frustrum. And very helpfully, they've given us this uh, formula volume of the cone. You will need to learn some um, volume calculations or some volume formulas. But actually, for these types of questions, they do tend to make it a little bit easier for you. OK, just to make it a little, however, more difficult, they've given you density. OK, and they want you to work out the mass using density values. OK, so um, I think the first thing I would do is I would just make sure that I've also put in my other formula, which is density 
equals mass divided by volume. Okay, and as I've done before with speed equals distance over time, what I would do is I'd say, well, if I look at the density, grams is a measurement of mass, per means over, and centimeters cubed is a measurement of volume. So density must equal mass over volume. Okay, now there is gonna be a fair bit of working on this particular one, but hopefully using that whole idea, you need to bear this in mind as I'm working through, um, that the formula I'm going to use, I'll try and keep it in shot as far as I can. Okay, but let's just have a look then firstly at the large cone. Okay, so this is the cone over overall height okay okay so the first thing is density equals mass over volume all righty okay so um, well we don't know the mass we're going to work it out but 2.5 is the density and the volume based on the um, formula and the information that we've given us is going to be and it's a bit of a long one is a third I'm going to put dot rather than the times, okay? It means exactly the same, but times pi times the radius squared, which is 6 squared, times the height, which is 15, okay? And if I pop all that in my calculator, what my calculator very helpfully does is it gives me um, without the calculation of pi. So it actually tells me it's 180 pi. So it just makes it a little bit easier because then if I cross multiply what I can say for the large cone the mass equals 450 pi. Okay so that's my first bit of information that I need. Okay so let's now have a look and do the same exercise using the small cone. Okay so the small cone here now, the only thing that they've been a little bit sneaky on is that they've, if you look on the picture, what they've not done is told us the radius of this small cone. So they've not told us that radius. But what they have told us is that the height is going to be five centimetres. OK, well, what it means is, is that you've got to be a little bit uh, careful about things like similarity. So we've got a linear, mathematically similar product. Well, actually, they, they are mathematically similar. But if we look at the linear values, this small cone is a third the size of the large cone in terms of height. And the way I know that is because this is 15 and this is 5. So basically, if I divide through by 3... I get five, okay? So it means then that this is a third the size of this. So if you like, the large cone is three times bigger, okay? So it means then if I want to work out the radius, if the radius of the large cone is 12, if I divide that by three, then it means the radius of the small cone must be four centimetres. Okay, and again, I need to use that bit of information when I'm working through my formula. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to work out again density equals mass over volume. Just a quick tip here that when you're answering these questions, if you can, you can see here, I've actually written the formula three times on this answer. Now that might seem a little bit overboard, but it's just something that helps a lot with revision. That If you keep writing the formula down, it just impresses it upon your mind. So you might as well write it in these, uh, these types of questions. So have a go at writing the formula at the beginning of every single answer that you do, and then that will help you to remember it. Okay, so again, density is 2.5. Mass, we don't know. We're going to work it out. But the volume, again, using the formula is a third times pi times, in this case now, it's going to be 4 squared. Um, oh, I beg your pardon, it's 2 squared. I'm so sorry. 2 squared, okay. This distance along here, the whole distance along here is 4, okay. So that's a third of 12, okay? What it means then is that the radius is actually two squared, okay? And multiply that by the height of five, okay? So if I pop that then into my calculator, I get quite a nice value of 50 over three pi 
equals mass. OK, now, if I wanted to calculate that out, I could do um, and it would give me something like uh, I don't know, I'd have to calculate it on my calculator. But what I've done is because I've got two values of pi here, all I've done is I've just asked my calculator to calculate the mass of the fullstrom, so the mass of the full fustrum rather, uh, frustrum, okay, is going to be the mass of the large cone, so large cone minus the small cone, okay? And I'm just going to pop that in a little bit of space right at the bottom here, okay? So that's going to be 450 pi minus 50 over 3 pi, and that's going to give me 1300 over 3 pi. And if I pop that in my calculator, I'm going to get 1361 Let's just move that up a little bit. Point uh, three five six eight one seven. Okay, so if I want that then to uh, an appropriate degree of accuracy, well, I think probably for these an appropriate degree of accuracy would be one decimal place. So I would just simply write that as one three six one point four, and that's going to be. Um, grams to 1 dp, 1 dp. Okay, and that would answer that particular question. There's quite a lot of working on that, and hopefully if you're able to print out uh, the solution paper, the worked answer paper, I will be scanning all of these so you can have a look um, and then see if that matches up with the kind of solution that you've uh, that you've worked through. OK, so we're going to leave it there. That's the end of this particular series on the um, Edexcel calculator paper two. Um, I hope it's been OK for you. If you're not sure about any of the calculations, please do add comments below. I'll always come back to you. Uh, subscribe to the site. I'm going to be working through some of the other papers over the next couple of weeks, and hopefully they will help you with revision for exams that are coming up fairly soon. Okay, take care. Have a good day. Thanks now. Bye-bye.